Hey everybody. Uh, in this video today, we are going to talk more about lighting. Um, I often talk about replacing your tubes uh, once a year, so we're going to actually talk a little bit more about that. We're going to talk a lot more about that probably. Um, but if in hearing that you have scratched your head and said, "Well, what am I supposed to do with all these old tubes?" or "What's you know they're still light and bright and so on and so forth." Well, that is one of the unseen costs of this hobby. So before we settle down to really have this conversation, I wanted to just show you this. This comes from my other room, and they're on their way to the recycling center. I just haven't gotten there. These have been piling up for a little while. But those are all fluorescent tubes. Every one of them works perfectly well. Every one of them is no more than a year old. Some of them are even less than that, depending on what they were lighting. Um... But that's the long and short of it, everybody. There you go. I mean, if you're going to replace your tubes every year, that's what you end up with. A bunch of tubes that are perfectly good, but you are not using. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, I am going to go ahead and get the other camera set up. Give you a little sneak peek behind the scenes. There's my tripod with my good camera. So we're going to sit back and we're going to have a nice long look at this tank. I'll probably throw some food in there to get a little bit of activity moving. And then we are going to go into a little bit more discussion about lights and lighting in your aquarium. Now, as you may or may not know, I just uh, replaced the lighting on this tank the other day. I had LEDs on it, but the LEDs that I had on it were not meant for aquarium use, and they were not even meant for growing plants or anything. They were simply outdoor floodlights. They were simply meant to provide light. I'm not going to get into it now. I did shoot a video the other day sort of explaining why they're not really good uh, for plants. But in this video, I want to talk more about uh, more conventional lighting that we would think of, whether they would be uh, incandescent bulbs or your fluorescent tubes. And there's a variety of different fluorescent tubes that are all still the same thing, more or less. They're just different sizes. Um, the three stand, it's, a, it's a really stupid way of measuring it. They measure it in eighths of an inch. So a T8 is actually eight eighths of an inch or one inch in diameter. A T5 is five eighths of an inch diameter and a T12 is twelve eighths of an inch diameter which is an inch and a half. Um, so that number just correlates to the size of the tube. If you have a fixture that takes the old T12s and you don't want to use those old bulky uh, inefficient bulbs, you can actually use the T8s in the same fixture. The pin uh, configuration is the same size. When you move down to the new uh, high efficiency T5 units, those are a different pin configuration and you need a unit that is set up to take the T5 tubes. Uh, but the T8 and the T12 tubes are interchangeable. Uh, you probably wouldn't be able to go backwards. You probably wouldn't be able to put a T12 in a fixture meant for a T8. The pin configuration would be the same size, but the space that they would allow for the tube uh, would probably not be adequate to put that big fat T12 where the T8 is supposed to be. Uh, but regardless, those two are somewhat interchangeable. The important thing is changing them. Uh, I can't stress this enough. This is really... A real thing. Um, I, I've dealt with this many, many times over the years with a variety of different kind of plants. Um, the, the, the phosphors, whatever it is in the tubes that makes them produce light, degrades over time. And um, regardless of how many thousands of hours it says on the box, that is simply how long it's estimated to work before it burns out and stops functioning altogether. That is not any kind of estimation on how long you will be getting effective lighting at the color temperature and spectrum the tube is sold at. Now the tubes we're looking at here in this tank are 6500K. That is important. Um, I'll get into that in a minute, but that does degrade over time. So when you've got tubes that are a year old, they're only running at about 50% what they were the day you bought them as far as the amount of light they're giving your plants. Uh, again, in the other video, I talked a little more about PAR. Um, it's, it's just it's a really, really... Uh, when we start talking about light in those regards, it's going down a rabbit hole. It's going to get really difficult to talk about it without getting complicated. Um, but the color spectrums of the light that's being produced degrades, and you will be getting a lot more yellows and greens 
uh, in your tank, even though you your eye probably will not be able to pick it up. All those light bulbs we just looked at on the floor, I guarantee if I put one of them in next to a brand new tube, uh, you would have to have a very, very good eye to tell that there's any difference at all. Um, you probably need electronic equipment to detect the difference. The plants, however, know the difference, and the way they grow, it affects them. So if you don't have a planted tank, this still applies to you, because you really do have a planted tank. Everybody's got a planted tank. You've got algae in your tank. You've got stuff in your tank. I know it's not planted, but it's still got um, plant life growing in it. So if you've got tubes on there that are lighting your tank up because you want to see all your pretty fish swimming around in a bare, empty glass tank, well, as time goes on, those tubes will degrade and they will begin producing more color spectrums that are favorable for the algal growth in your tank. That's why I changed out the LEDs. The LEDs were not providing me with adequate lighting in the sense that it was not good for the plants. It actually was the kind of light that was good for the algae, but not good for my plants. It looked great to you and me, but what looks to you and me is not what looks to a plant. So, when you start talking about color temperature, let's talk about what the plants need. Um, I know it looks nice to put those soft white bulbs, you get that nice soft glow, it looks all sunsetty in your tank. You're not doing your plants any favors by using those soft bulbs. They're not getting anywhere near enough of the blue light spectrums that they need. If you really want a healthy tank with just a low, I'm talking low tech here, everybody that knows my videos, knows my tanks, super duper low tech, um, you need to use 6500K bulbs. They're a little difficult to find. Um, usually, 45 to 5,000 is where you will see that's a very common light spectrum because it's easier on the eyes than the 6500K. The 6500K is a fairly blue light. It's not the most pleasant to look at, but it's what your plants need. But you don't want to go any higher than 10,000K because then you're getting up into too high energy. There's not enough reds in there and your plants will actually suffer as well. So the magic window for your plants is 6,500K to 10,000K. And for a low-tech planted tank, especially with these plants that don't have really high lighting needs, you don't really even need to 10,000K. Uh, that would only be if you really want to show them off and show off the colors of your fish, uh, etc. So what is this K? What am I talking about with this color temperature? And why do I keep saying 6500K? That K stands for Kelvin, degrees Kelvin. And that's what that number is, that 6400 degrees Kelvin. It's a really stupid number, and it's a really stupid scale of measurement. So I'm going to attempt to explain how it works. Uh, you probably all know that when you heat up a piece of steel, for example, it goes through different color changes. It gets yellow, and then it gets orange, and eventually you'll get this nice bright cherry red. And at some point, it gets so hot that it incandesces white. And what the color temperature scale is, is we've taken this imaginary material that doesn't really exist. It's this arbitrary material. And we say, okay, at... 2700 degrees Kelvin, this magic material would glow at this particular color temperature, or color, that's where color temperature comes in. If we heated it up to 5000 degrees Kelvin, it would glow at this color, and so on and so forth. So that's what that number is. It's just this sort of arbitrary scale of a made-up material that's theoretically being heated up on the Kelvin scale to a temperature that someone has decided makes it glow this color or that color. So make what you want out of that, but that's the scale we have to go by. So using that scale, and that's the scale you really need to go by, don't look at what the packaging says. Um, you'll see daylight, you'll see bright white, you'll see cool white, you'll see so many different names, and they're all just names. There's no standard, there's no scale. Um, I've seen daylight, everything from 3000K all the way up to 6700K. Uh, I've seen tubes called daylight. Um, usually it will be cool or blue or bright. Um, it will be in the name somewhere if that's all you've got to go by. But sometimes you've got to hunt, but you can usually find that K number on the packaging somewhere. And believe me, I'm, you really want to go with the 6500K. If you can't find one at your local store, 
order it online. They're readily available. They're more or less an industrial bulb. They're the kind of, you know, when you walk into like an office building and it's sort of unpleasantly blue. That's because these are their 6500K tubes. Again, they're not the easiest to look at, but they're what your plants need. And they really do show your fish off better. Because what's happening, and the reason the 2700K doesn't work as well, is because it's only glowing at a temperature that's producing wavelengths of a certain color. And if you don't get a high enough color temperature, you're not producing enough of the blue wavelengths. I mentioned in my other video that light that is within any part of the visible spectrum does technically fall into PAR lighting. That's photosynthetically active radiation. Within that little very narrow window, um, you've, you've got two peak absorption levels. You've got one way down in the red. They need a lot of the red, low energy light, and they need a lot up in the blue end. And the blue end is really, really important. Um, it's, it's the most important. It's where you get your growth. It's a really high energy wavelength of light, and that's where the plant gets the majority of its energy. Um, the red light actually helps a lot more with root development, flowering. Um, you don't need as much of the red, really, if you're just trying to grow beautiful plants. Um, putting red lighting on plants is only to do a very specific thing, to force them to, to uh, flower, or if you're trying to prevent etoliation or things like that, you might flood plants with more red light than you would blue. But typically, you want a lot of blue in there, and you're just not going to get that with the 2700K bulb. You're just not going to get it even with the 5000K bulb. The 5000K is certainly better than the 2700, if that's all you can find, but you really need to get up to that 6500K. I personally prefer 6700K, um, but they're not as easy to find. You might have to go to a specialty agricultural grow shop or something to find the 6700K tubes. 6500K is probably what you're going to be able to find most readily. Um, and on that note, I have spoken to some people that have bought their tubes at their local fish stores. And you can do that if you want. And you can buy those fancy bulbs that say they're for your aquarium. And they say they're for growing plants under. And they're called the Grow Lux this or the Plant you know, Beam That, whatever. It's your money. All you need to do is buy a high quality brand name tube that has 6700K on it. I buy either Sylvania, Phillips, GE, I don't even care the brand, as long as it's a high quality tube um, and it's 6700K or 6500K. Um, the reason I say the higher quality brand is because you're going to get more of a guaranteed of every tube is going to be the same color temperature, there's going to be a truer color temperature, truer color rendering. Um, it's just, it's better to go with the higher quality. I know that cutting corners and say, you know, we're all on a budget. If you keep fish, you don't have any extra money. I, I know how it goes. But there are some things where you really just don't skimp. You know, when you're getting your car serviced, you don't get the cheap brakes. Um, when you're lighting your tank and you don't want algae and you don't want cyanobacteria, if you want your fish to be beautiful, if you want your plants to be good and healthy, you gotta, you gotta spend the money on the lighting. Lighting is very, very important in your planted tank. Um, it's, it's... It's extremely important in your planted tank. So I don't really want to get into talking about LEDs. I do want to stay more on the traditional type lighting. So if we're going to talk about lighting your tank with the more traditional way, there's other bulbs and there's other tubes and stuff you can use to light your tank. There's HIDs, there's incandescent, there's neon. Um, I don't honestly think there's any neon that glows a bright white. There could be. I have no idea. But I don't think there is. Every time I think of neon, I think of blues and reds and colored um, lights, but you can use halogen, xenon, there's all sorts of different bulbs and tubes that you can use that will produce light. But they don't all do it the same way or with the same efficiency. The reason we use fluorescent tubes is they give a very homogeneous, that is a very even spread and even distribution of the lighting, and they're pretty efficient. They're nowhere near as efficient as LEDs. Again, I will do a video where we'll talk a lot more about LEDs specifically. LEDs are much, much more efficient, but there's a whole... It's just LEDs are something altogether different. Uh, we will talk about LEDs, trust me. Um, the tubes, though, are just way more efficient than incandescents by far. Incandescent bulbs, to me, are just... They're, they're dinosaurs. They are a ridiculous, absurd joke. If you need a good, efficient space heater and you don't mind some light shining on things, then an incandescent bulb is great. Um, they work about 97% efficient as a heat source. 
Uh, in other words, 97% of the electricity you run through an incandescent bulb gets converted to heat. 3% of that is photons. It's shed as light. So you've got a 97% inefficiency rate for incandescent bulbs. It's your money, once again. If, and, and then, of course, you've got the heat issue and everything else, depending on how close to the water you have it, uh, or whether you've got any emergent plants, the heat may become an issue. If you don't want to heat your tank and you just want to you know, use the light bulb as a heat source, uh, you can do that. But incandescent bulbs are extraordinarily inefficient when it comes to wasting electricity just to produce light. Once again, your regular tubes are probably going to be your best bet. Just buy high quality and get the proper color temperature. That color temperature is very, very important. Now, there's nothing wrong if you want to get a little more sophisticated in your tank and you want to go for an early morning feel and an afternoon feel. And again, if you've got a high-tech plant and you really know your stuff with plants and you're trying to force certain plants to... Uh, grow differently or to force them to flower things like that you know you may have other reasons for adding softer lighting in your tank but I do like a nice softly lit tank um, soft or warm usually refers to more red in it and bright or cool uh, usually refers to more blue in it so that softer warmer light is what you naturally get in the sunset hours and in the um, you know sunrise this the sun's got a lot more um, uh, atmosphere to come through and the light waves bend and they slow down and they get stretched out and the longer they become the more red they become that's just how light works you squeeze them together you get a higher wavelength uh, and you've got bluer light so there's a reason we have that relaxing feel when we see the, the softer colors in a tank. It's in your brain is registering that as the end of the day, winding down, relaxing, or just the peaceful rise of the sun. Um, you know, chemical changes are happening in your brain when you're seeing these different colors of light shining in your tank. Again, I can go on and on and on a lot about lighting, and I probably will. I'm, I'm just absolutely fascinated um, by light. Um, but as far as in your tank, if you really did want to do that little slightly more sophisticated tank, you can have two fixtures on top. Have one that's got some 2700K bulbs in it, and then, you know, for the, the, the bulk of the day, you have your good 6500K on there. And then in the evening for a little while, you can do an hour or two of just having that soft lighting on there before you wind down for bed at night. And it will completely change the feel of your tank. It'll probably even change the behavior of your fish. Um, if you've got nocturnal fish, that nice soft lighting will probably uh, get them to start being a little more active and moving around and seeing what's going on because it will mimic sunset. Um, I really feel like I could probably just rattle on about whatever is just popping into my mind about lighting, but I'm pretty much sure I've covered everything. I wanted to really make sure and stress that you understand that you really do have to change out your tubes uh, once a year. You really do need to get the proper color temperature. I hope I made the color temperature thing a little more understandable for you at least. It, it really is a significant number and you really do need to pay attention to that. Uh, and you certainly can't trust the daylight or whatever, unless of course you're spending the money on something that says this is for growing plants then it's probably 6500k again save the money go out and buy yourself a sylvania you know you can buy a six pack of the you know a box of tubes for the office at the office supply store you can probably get for half the price you pay for two tubes uh, at your local fish shop so again just buy the high quality buy the right color temperature swap them out once a year and that's really all you need to know about putting light in your tank and that will help prevent algae it'll help prevent cyanobacteria and it will make whatever plants you do have in your tank flourish and if you don't have plants Plants, that high bright blue color temperature uh, will offer a much much higher rating of color rendering and we can talk about color rendering and how light affects what you see as far as colors in your tank uh, in a different video because this one's already going on way too long uh, I always say I'm absolutely fascinated by light and I could really really talk about it a lot so I'm gonna wrap that up any questions please leave them below uh, I always try to get back to everybody and I know this is a really complicated and you know it's just a really rabbit hole type uh, conversation and we will eventually get into talking about things like lux and lumen and par and we will talk about how light loses its intensity over distance and etc etc we can go on and on and on about lighting so i really am wrapping it up now i thank you for watching this one if you're not already subscribed please go ahead and do so that way you won't miss any of the stuff we got coming up i do have lots of tanks besides this one and i do shoot other video i know i do shoot a lot of video of this tank but i do shoot video of my other tanks too and you don't want to miss any of it so thanks for watching again and i will see you real soon on the next one